Hello and welcome to the hiatus uh, watch of Steven University. This week we'll of course be re- revisiting, based on our discussion a couple weeks ago uh, of the Flood Order, we're going to be revisiting Cheeseburger Backpack because it became very clear that Cheeseburger Backpack specifically uh, was a was a, a valid contender for first episode uh, based on the fact that it was actually produced first. Um, and then uh, I think the Flood Order puts it first, is that correct? Yes, it does, yeah. Yeah, so I think that considering its potential, we've never really thought of it that way. Uh, we always talked about whether Laser Light Cannon or Gem Glow was the superior choice for intro, uh, for uh, opening episode. We never really considered Cheeseburger Backpack. So as a result, we are revisiting it. And that is what this discussion is. Hi, Chris. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, have a, <laughs> I have an opinion on that, but do you want to recap this first, Dan? Sure. Let, know what, let the people at home know. What happened in this week's um, Stephen well, Universe? Well, the, the very, the very straightforward plot is that the uh, that Stephen has ordered a cheeseburger backpack to compensate for his lack of ability to help the team in any other way. Um, there's a mission to return the Sea Spire, uh, sorry, to return the Moon Goddess statue to the Sea Spire, which will stop it from sinking into the Earth. Um, he has one job. He's like, perfect. I've got the backpack. I can put it in there. He also brings a bunch of supplies, and they, they turn out to be quite useful in their journey through the Sea Spire. They finally get to the top, and they realize that Stephen packed the bag with so many supplies, he actually forgot to bring the Sea Spire itself. It crumbles into the uh, into the ocean, and uh, and the gems are actually surprisingly supportive about the fact that they just lost a massive gem landmark, um, which I think is a really sweet moment. That's the basic premise. Hmm. Thoughts. Uh, well, my overarching one, Dan, is uh, I'm just, just going to say it. This is, for me, without a doubt, the best introduction to the show. Uh, yep. <laughs> regardless of uh, what I thought about it last time, which I can't really remember, but assuming you've listened, you you will remind us. I, um, I, so, I, we'll, I was, we'll get to that later. We'll, we'll have a general chat first, yeah. then we'll get to some of your previous thoughts and sort I, of analyse. I just watched this on rewatch going, oh, fuck, this, I mean, this is the best introduction to the yeah. show. I, it's amazing um, we never considered it. it. We, I listened back to the podcast this morning. We literally never even hinted at it being an open, a better opening episode. We, we, it was long, that thought was long gone. It was between those first two episodes and we never considered the possibility of opening with this one. But you're right. <laughs> it's crazy because, okay, so every character is introduced in a much less obvious way mm-hmm. than they are in um gem glow so pearl's kind of character and paranoia and um you know even hints at her gem love and wider story is present throughout as she gets kind of nervous about steven taking it seriously and stuff amethyst throughout the adventure but also the stuff with the egg sets up her character beautifully Garnet's smooth, calm, but then the way she kicks down the post to walk over the water. Um, yeah, you is, get a hint of her quiet her badassery. Character. Yeah, yeah. S- Stephen with the whole backpack stuff, the whole u- being slightly useless but really wanting to achieve and wanting to be part of the team is present throughout. The humour is present throughout. Um, the moment, <laughs> the, the moment where he puts the boat on the dinghy, and then the boat <laughs> just sails off. It's just brilliant and so archetypical, uh, atypical or whatever, um, archetypal, whatever, um, of some of the, the best type of humour within this show. Yep. That's present. The the lore of the gems and this being a wider world and a wider story is present, I suppose. Well, no, even you could even make an argument that Jamie and the fact that we see the postman and spend a bit of time with him, which I think I was annoyed about the first time round. Um, because I was like, why are we spending so much time with the postman? But he represents the town <laughs> and the, the, there being other characters in this world. And it isn't a show where you have a character to just hand over a package. You're going to spend a bit of time with that person and perhaps spend a bit of time with people other than the crystal gems. The warp pads, the the going through the warp zone, Stephen sticking his head out. There's just so many elements of this show which are on display here. In my opinion, way better than they are on display in uh, Gem Glow or Laser Light Cannon. Cheeseburger backpack for the win. I'm all in. Yeah. That's the introduction episode. Honestly, I, I agree. It's really mad. It's crazy. I never thought I'd say it, but like, yeah, we, 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 over, we had a, well, there's a massive oversight. This is by far, there are downsides. I made, I tried to look for reasons not to do it as well, so, so we wouldn't be completely unfair. I agree with everything you've just said. It sets the adventure and comedic tone early. We introduce all the key players. 
um we set up steven's immaturity particularly great like well like you know and 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 his immaturity but in the face of wanting to do the right thing that's important it's it's you can't just make him immature you have to make him immature in the face of his desire to do good and do right like that's that's important to that character um we set up how much they sort of support steven and how they sort of act as a family unit for steven um there are drawbacks though first of all it doesn't have the setting of beach city which is really the home of the show so to have the first episode not set in beach city you could argue is a bit of a shame um Mm -hmm. i also do think there's a potential you could argue and i don't think either of these points by the way are huge which is why i'm agreeing with the overall you know the overall idea that this should be the first episode but the other potential point you could raise is making steven uh, having the gems bring steven on a mission this early maybe hurts the following two episodes if you then put gem glow and laser light cannon on it because the sort of tone particularly in gem glow is i don't get to come on missions with you like you know and like you could argue that this is almost a little arc that's built up to that because in gem glow he proved he's got some powers and in laser light cannon he proved that he's capable of thinking on his feet and therefore getting the like he managed to acquire the cannon and save the day you could argue that those two build up to pearl being okay with bringing him along this week and by moving it to the front, it feels like he gets demoted between this episode and what follows. That I makes mean, sense. There's a logic there. Yeah, that makes but, sense. Although you could, of course, solve that, Chris, by uh, doing some sort of, I don't know, flood order that has uh, this episode as the first one and then ignores the other two. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just thought that would be just I mean, to throw a bit of controversy in there. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. You put, you put, no, but I, in terms of the flood order, do you think. What do you think were George Lucas's intentions with Star Wars, Dan? Mm. Do you think? Mm. Mm. Good effort. <laughs> Back up. I went. I went straight to the comments section. We uploaded that video today for context. I went straight to the comments to see if people were like, <laughs> "Yeah, my thoughts on Star Wars is." <laughs> there was some of that. There was some of that. That's a little bit. I only found one that was like, "Both of you are right," and at one point you were saying the same thing as each other. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like. Yeah, I mean, my favorite one was the one that said, um, "Where was it? Oh, it was really, it was good. It was like this debate could have ended way. It was something like they, I can't find the quote quote room, but someone said this debate would have ended earlier, Dan, if you'd have just said the the, the reality, which is that the order, the, the numbering denotes chronology, not you know watch order, viewing order, which is true. So like <laughs> that would have ended the debate much quicker. But anyway, that's a different, that's a different question." Anywho, I got so, a, I got a bitching argument to that Dan, but I just don't want to get involved in the Star Wars chat again, you know. No, so. neither do I. Um, so yeah, in general, I think this is a really, really strong episode. Some of the notes I made that we didn't talk about the first time, the reference to Barb really early, like mm. Sadie's mum mentioned three episodes in, even though she does not then show up for a very long time. So they obviously had her character and her position at the post office. They knew that way ahead of her introduction. Because Jamie yeah. literally says, like, oh, Barb will be mad if I don't get this signed for or whatever. Um, I also love the music. We didn't talk about that in the first, the first, you know, the, the original watching. It's re- The music in this episode really sets the tone for the music going forward. It's extremely video gamey, particularly the moment when Steven uses the jumper to cross the ravine thing, the, 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 the sort of gap thing where the, where the suction is pulling down, the, the whirlpool. That music is the most video game music this show has ever done, and it's brilliant. It really does set the tone well. It's I'll... quite, it's it's quite video gamey in general. This episode, yeah, it's hugely like, actually, yeah, yeah, absolutely agree the, with that. The the way the plot unfolds, the mission itself, the way you, you, it's almost like you walk, they walk into this place, and then they've got to find a way of getting across the river, river, and then they've got to find a way of getting past the. Yes. Shard creatures, like, it's very video game-like. Yeah. It's like a cross between a platformer and a point-and-click, because it's like, you know, in point-and-click adventure games where it's like you've got a selection of random items and you just sort of rub each yeah. item up against the problem until one of them solves it magically, because <laughs> I was terrible at point-and-click adventure games. And I found a lot of them, the clues were always so arbitrary. It was like, oh, you need to get past this door. And I'm like, well, I've only got, I've got, um, uh, you know, a drumstick 
and a bowling ball and it's like ah what you're supposed to do is roll the bowling ball at the telephone which will knock it off which will cause the guy to do this and then he will unlock the door and it's like wait what the solution to getting through this door was a bowling ball like they're always so arbitrary so i, I was so bad at point and click adventure games because i could never follow that logic so i would just try everything until something worked it was an exercise in frustration but this this does feel a bit like steven's doing that this week he's like let me try a dinghy and then he throws it out and that's one of my my favorite gags in this episode by far i mean i also just love Pearl. well the dinghy jokes are the best two jokes but i do also love pearl just go we fought a giant bird <laughs> mm. i also love amethyst pulling out the tray of the fridge really and carefully it, yeah. and then just throwing it to the ground <laughs> i got this and then poof, look it fits which is just amazing but yeah no the, the dinghy gags are both amazing like like you see it coming a mile away but it doesn't even matter he throws he throws that dinghy on the water, and you just know exactly what's going to happen. And the way they'll just sat and stand there, completely still watching it as it goes off the edge of the waterfall. It's just <laughs> it's beautiful. It's played so well. It's animated beautifully. So what did I well, what did I say before then? Can we Sam? make a note on the animation first? Actually, because I think the designs are beautiful, and I think the gags are timed beautifully. But I think this mm. actually is the worst animation in the show's backlog. Like it is the first produced. And the designs themselves and the backgrounds are still good because they've always been good on this show. Like the general design and aesthetic of the show is still present and good. But everything just moves in this weird sort of jelly-like way. Like everyone has a weird sort of shape and mass to them that moves with their movements. Like there's a point where Pearl like picks up Steven and squishes him up against her and they sort of like their faces contort. And like Steven like seems to be able to stretch himself to like weird heights where he makes himself almost look thin it's like he stretched his body and then he yeah, squishes back that down one, yeah Ste- steven looks really weird in many scenes in this episode and i guess it's just the first one they made therefore i guess that makes sense but it's a weird choice like it's yeah i guess they were just experimenting and trying to figure out what worked and what didn't but the, i don't like the way anything moves in this episode with the exception of the timing on the gags which i guess is more of an editing thing than an animation thing but um the way the stuff the voice moves. is quite nasally in places as well, um, but I don't yeah. know if that's just young Stephen and that's just genius. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah, I think so. And I think as well, with another thing about this is like in terms of like uh, before we move on to sort of like some of your your original thoughts, um, like what the fuck a crystal shrimp? Like just full stop. What the fuck a crystal shrimp? That was quite funny though. The way Pearl's just like crystal shrimp. <laughs> Yeah, like they just they they exist. They're a thing. They've never come back, as to, to my knowledge, not not in any tangible way. They might maybe in the background of a shot in another episode or something. But I, I don't recall seeing them. I guess they're just like insects from Homeworld that have come, that or like a creature from Homeworld that sort of sort of stowed away maybe on some of the structures as they've brought them over and like are living there. I guess that's the is that is that is that the me fan explaining it? I guess it is, but that makes sense, right? Like it... that makes sense. I mean, I think it's more likely that they just. <laughs> weren't met strong maybe it didn't come back for that reason but they are it, it is bizarre yeah, yeah it's weird really and I, 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 I put that down to what we've referred to a bunch of times which is like that's just a thread that didn't get continued yeah i guess or like it is maybe it's just one of those like again there's like weird little not inconsistencies but like the little speed bumps we talk about where like it's something they like set up like as if they were going to deal with it and then they decided not to so it sort of just sits there as this weird arbitrary sort of thing I tell you what, though, oh, on that subject, Chris, I know I don't want this to become a segment on these revisits, but as you know, I'm rereading the Harry Potter books. I found the ultimate speed bump in a Harry Potter book. Stop criticizing J.K. Rowling. But I found another one, and it's a really good one. You, you're going to have trouble fighting this one, I think. Can I quickly tell you? Go on, I'll give it a go. The end of Goblet of Fire, Harry has seen Cedric die... And they describe getting into the horseless carriages to get to the Hogwarts Express in Hogsmeade. Why does Harry not see the horses then? Boom. Wait, what? Say that again. So at the end of Goblet of Fire, Harry has just seen Cedric die, which we know in the next book is why he can see the Thestrals, because he's seen Cedric die. The Thestrals pull the Hogwarts carriages... And he's really surprised at the beginning of the sixth book because he's like, what are these horses? These carriages pull themselves. And the reason is because he's now seen Cedric die. He can see them. But following Cedric's death at the end of Goblet of Fire, they describe Harry 
and the guys getting on the horse, the the sorry, the 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 the, the self pulling carriages to go to the Hogwarts Express. By that point, he should be able to see them. I bet if you asked Rowling about that, she would say it's because he'd not accepted Cedric's death yet, and oh yeah, not you, you can fa- you can or... fan explain it away, which is exactly what I describe a speed bump as being. It's something that doesn't a hundred percent break the continuity. You could just about explain it, but it feels really close to a plot hole, <laughs> and that's that's that is the exact definition of what that is. <laughs> because don't they don't when he's when that's discovered, doesn't he ask about the fact that he didn't see them and yet he saw his mum die and they're like, Oh well you were a baby, etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, they cover that, but they don't cover why he can't yeah. see them after Cedric the first time. There you go. Little Harry right. Potter speed bump. The new segment on Steven University, Harry Potter speed bumps. <laughs> you just get upset Brands. because you don't like me finding holes in Harry Potter because you love JK so much. And I love JK a lot too, but then then you know the books no, not, I love they're... JK specifically for that, how how well thought out all this shit was. So I don't like anything that verges on, you know, indicating that it wasn't I'm not wrong though, am I? Can you can you honestly can you can you like genuinely like you no know, gen genuinely I think if he didn't I think that's to do with him accepting what he'd witnessed and all that sort of stuff. Genuinely. Mm. I think that's less of a speed bump than with whatever one you pointed out before. Oh the uh, the weird inconsistency between whether there was a whether there was a Quidditch cup that was separate or not. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I think that's way more of a speed bump than than that will be. Interesting. I'm the other way around, but fair enough. Let's move on. Um, last couple of little notes on the episode. If we go to your original points, um, I just love the gag where he pulls the first aid kit out of his bag to put Mister Queasy in. I don't recall that gag at all, but that made me laugh a lot. Um, and I, I feel bad for Mister Squeezy. I, uh, Mister Mister Queasy. You know, why anyone would? Is it Mister Squeezy the teddy bear? I, thing? I think it was Queasy. Like, as in he feels sick. Queasy, sorry. I thought. I thought. I could be wrong. Uh, I feel bad for Mr. Queasy. I think, you know, <laughs> uh, I, anything that anything where essentially a teddy bear is destroyed. Yes, we've me, um, we've talked about this, haven't we? We fields. talked about this with MC Bear Bear and his Tata. I get upset easily. And I don't know. I'm guessing I missed that the first time. But um, it upset me this time. Certainly. I had to give my teddy bear a hug afterwards, you know? No. Oh. Yeah, man. Well, there you go. I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, One of the little note about the music before we get to your comments is the last thing I have to say on the episode. Um, Stephen sings, hey, Mr. Postman, bring the post, bring me the post that I want the most, or whatever the words are. The the music that then plays on that entire scene is an orchestral version. Not orchestral, but like a musical version of that song. Blimey. But that's it's not a spoof of, hey, Mr. Postman. No, it's not, is it? It's like, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. They like do the musical, like the tune that Stephen just sang. They then yeah, underlay. but that's a tune they've made up. Is yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. Saying. Uh, yeah, that's not an existing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just appreciate that Stephen sang a song, and then the the music of the like the incidental music. Oh yeah, it's very of, clever. Like it's, under, undertoned only, that through the rest of that scene. I thought that was pretty cool. I only questioned it because my original oh wow was the idea of them getting the rights, but I was getting confused with the hey hey Mister Postman, bring right. me a. Jo-. I was getting confused with that. Uh, no. Shall we get to what you originally said? Oh, let's. Go on. This is a direct quote. Don't want to offend anyone, but compared to last week, this was bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> last week had so much heart. We dealt with his father and got hints about the mum thing. This week, it's a big historical building that relates to his mum, but it's just an excuse for jokes when it crumbles into the ocean. I'm not sure what really happened. Like, what happened? Even the shitty cockroach monsters at least were a clearer ABC story arc. This week, they went to a place, walked around it for a bit, the place fell the place fell down, they fucked off home in a dinghy. I uh, I disagree now that it doesn't have an ABC. I think it does have an ABC. I've got, this it's is... just, if anything, it's just a much clearer ABC. Yeah. <laughs> and what's amazing... Literally... Are you, even better is when you say this... It felt like Katy Perry and Lady Gaga had done a duet and this was the music video. I'm not sure what was going on, but there were a lot of bright colours. <laughs> I do. If you want to know about that, you should hear, not that, but my favourite um, notion of like the similar is, um, have you ever heard Donald Glover talk about, in his stand-up, talk about 
Kanye West and Lady Gaga doing a joint tour together. <laughs> and how he's upset it didn't happen because it would have been the most crazy thing anyone's ever witnessed. <laughs> That would have been um, funny. Yeah, so anyway. that would have been a better pull past me. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's got mu- like a much clearer ABC. Um, and I think I think the more nuanced um, how they care about Stephen and what Stephen, what this episode does for Stephen's confidence and ability yeah. to come on missions, I think is a bit harder to see. Um, if you, in these early stages, but on rewatch, that's incredibly evident. Yeah, I talk. I talk about that because um, we, we 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 spoke. I uh, when you said all, oh, so when you sort of when you got through your just general thoughts, my response was about Stephen's feeling of inadequacy to the gems because he hasn't mastered his powers, and talked about how like the backpack was sort of a substitute for that. And then I talked a little bit about how like the the, the thing that really sells me on this episode, and the reason I love this episode, and I do, I, I liked it originally, but I, I I like it even more now thinking of it as a first one. But I do think when he fucks up, the support he gets from the gems is the most valuable thing in this whole episode to me, because that is the tone of the show. They 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 care for each other and they want to support each other, and they're not mad at Stephen because you could have done it. There could have been cheap jokes there about you know Stephen, you fucked it up. You know, like, you know, they could have made a few jokes where they like mocked Stephen or like gave Stephen shit for like not bringing the thing or shouted or been mad or anything like that there's a million and one ways you could have done it that would have been very predictable and down that line but i think it speaks volumes about this show that they chose to have the the gems speak to him the way they did which was sort of like very supportive very soft and uh and, and and it really does sort of set the tone going forward for their relationship which is i think again the most valuable element of this episode which is another reason you could argue it should have been first because establishing that earlier is probably better yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's all fair. Mm. What other what other quotes from me have you got? <laughs> Did we need to spend twenty percent of the episode with him and the postman? <laughs> um. uh, <laughs> kind of valid still, but um, I think just because I know Jamie and Stephen on rewatch, I took more from that. I was like, oh, cool. I also but think I like that. I also think it's just like a light little like like a light little sort of. You know, you don't. You can't just go straight into mission. That you, for for the mission to feel abnormal, you need to see normal. And Stephen's sitting around waiting for the post and in his house. You know all that stuff, and like then going into the house and seeing the gems in there where they live. You, I think for the abnormal to really strike you, you've got to. You know, it's like the hero's journey doesn't work if he's already on the journey. There's the you know there's the refusal of the call and like you know you've got they've got to start in a place of sort of uh, stability before they they cross that threshold into the adventure. So without the scene from the postman, it's just like they're running around a sea spire. Do you know what I mean? Like I I think it's really it important sense, that yeah. you go into that. And also it's worth noting that I did the math, Chris, and it's a eight point seven percent of the runtime. <laughs> um, that says more about you. Yeah, than, uh, it does. The show. I mean. Pedantic is the the way I would describe myself. Also is uh, the word I would use. So similar, similar words. Yep. Well, you know, yeah, I'm need, joking. Needs must. Um, I <laughs> who else? Yeah, you, who else I, you gonna do the podcast with, dickhead? <laughs> you stuck with we, me now. Uh, I, I mean, I'd just give it up. <laughs> that makes me so I'm sad. Joking. <laughs> no, if you were like, I want to stop. I don't think I. I don't think I could be asked. I, I mean, I'd have to then edit it. You know, right? I see the problem. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd struggle. If you were, if you were done, I'd probably unless I'd just become like a really sad YouTuber, just looking at camera crying because that way I wouldn't have to edit audio files. <laughs> just thinking about <laughs> Steven Universe. <laughs> Um, i want to see that now (laughs) anyway it's a weird tangent but yeah i don't don't you know don't think i'd you know have the energy to work out how to edit down so if you left it's pretty much just me tweeting my thoughts on the latest episodes fair enough um i not to uh to to cut off that that thread of depression um let's let's last thing that you said i mean i'm hoping i'm hoping you're not leaving no, 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 no time soon. I'm happy. I enjoy. I re- I really enjoyed the podcast. I'm having a good. Fun. I'm having a good fun. Even these hiatus episodes, which I was a bit worried would would feel a bit flat, 
Like I'm having good fun doing them because they're they're kind of like uh I mean at a certain point I'm gonna be itching to get back to like the traditional format, but I I think these revisits yeah. are really helping actually because these revisits feel closer to what this podcast was before we hit hiatus. So these Don't are forget these, that it's only good. It's only week six, so it's <laughs> weeks. Mean, yeah, but it's week. How... Si- yeah, uh, it's week six for us, but the hiatus is quite deep in. But like, I think that the like the fact we've got a few different formats for these is keeping us engaged like the fact that sometimes it's a topic yeah. sometimes it's we tackle a couple of stories of news sometimes we do a revisit i think the uh the shifting of it is keeping me and you because that's that, honestly that's the real trick here is keep because when we're engaged i'm assuming that translates to the listeners being engaged when we're passionate about the discussion Hopefully. as we were on the flood order episode i think i would like to think that translates if we start getting disinterested then it, that's that's the issue. That's going to be a problem. You know what I but, mean? But there's also, of course, how uh, Honey, I Shrunk Stephen University to look forward to. So. Well, I think we've prioritised. I think we've made a choice to prioritise over the Garden Wall first, which is a shame because I, yeah, I, I, I do think people were excited for uh, Honey, I Shrunk the audience. Uh, audience? Oh, that God, I the, the 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 show's name, the uh, the, the live show's name. No, uh, Honey, we we shrunk Stephen University. Um, that is coming, but I think over the Garden Wall should take priority because I think that's more relevant oh, yeah, content. Definitely. No. we will get to it though i promise it's happening just the question of when yeah. uh moving us back to the episode though um the last thing we talked about which i thought was maybe worth hinting on if you still feel that way oh actually just to get a final thought on the jamie thing do you, do you still so do, do you agree with your initial thought do you still think there's validity to it do you think it's complete nonsense or um, are you I, somewhere in the middle i don't ag- I don't agree with it on re I still agree with it from the context of someone who doesn't know them. Right. But yeah, from me, for me, I was like, I enjoyed that scene because I was like, oh, cool, it's Jamie. Um, but I kind yeah, of see where sense. I'm coming from. I agree with my well, past self more on that than I do the lack of ABC, which well, is just wrong. <laughs> oh, what's interesting, actually, that I really like is that, like, I don't know if you recall this, Chris, but when they finally introduced Jamie again, the gap between this episode and that was so large, you were like, who's this? <laughs> and I was like, do you not remember? It's the postman you got annoyed by. <laughs> Poor so, Jamie. Gets such a bad rep. Yeah, he does. I'm going to have to... St- I'm gonna, you, 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 oh, no, I'll, I'll tell you the next point and then I'll let you talk for a second while I let the cat in because he's, he's, he's meowing a lot. Um, one thing we talked about, which I thought was interesting, was we talked about how the less the the, the gem sorry seemed less defined than Stephen early on, and we debated would they have been able to spend more time with them in these first few episodes to make them more ta- uh, to make it all feel a bit more tenable and get you more invested. But the counterpoint we talked about to that was if you do that, do you then lose time getting to know Stephen, who we agreed felt quite characterised at this point. I think what's interesting about that is I kind of disagree with myself on um, how formed the gems are. I think because I know the gems better, I can see a lot of signs of them and their characters in these. Um, I suppose from the but point I... of view of someone who doesn't know the characters. Yeah, I, exactly. I, that's a fair point. But actually, those little moments like the ones I listed earlier in this are giving you huge insights as to who these characters are. But if you're not picking that up as a new viewer, then is that? Yeah, is it not yeah coming but are through? you are you subtly picking it up though? And then and it's building in a few yeah, weeks' yeah. time when Pearl does something really strict. Do you understand it because you've accepted that's Pearl as a result of this? You know what I mean? Um, sorry, yeah, sorry for I, all the background noise, I listeners. Think they... I just had to let the cat in, and it made a lot absolute boatload of noise. Um, yeah, no, I agree with what you're saying there. Actually, I think you're right. It's it's I, you don't appreciate it in the, the right moment. Choices. I, yeah, I think you don't appreciate it in the moment, but they are embedding it here. So while it doesn't make the show any easier to get into the way they've approached it, subtly building the characters, I think it ultimately works in the show's favor. I think I think the reason I think one of the main reasons this show is so good is because of these opening episodes, and I think they do a lot of work setting up stuff that if they hadn't set up properly here would not feel as powerful or as strong or as good later on. I think that is actually the crux of the the flood order debate for me. Like now I think about it, is like the it's so essential to what makes this show good, this stuff. Um and I think people I don't think I don't think the end result is people enjoying the show as much as they should. Because I think you've sort of got to you've got to you've you've got to experience being having this stuff all built up to you. I think that's part of the show's design. And therefore, yes, you could make the gems a little clearer more immediately if you wanted but it would be at the expense of the show overall, I think. 
as uh, as that sort of all the points then that, that you had from that yeah. rewatch, from I've I've got a question then to potentially finish it. Who knows? Um, I clearly referenced from the quotes that you said a lot of t- uh, time about how th- the structure they're in uh, collapses and disappears. Now, obviously, we know a lot more about those structures and a lot more about. Mm-hmm. Um, what they represent and um, these locations being I think you've got a very... really important to the mythology. Yes. Do you think that in a way is weirder than anything? The fact that, uh, you know, as much as I said it flippantly at first in the original watch, now watching it back, it is quite shocking and surprising that they just outright destroy <laughs> this this place. Yeah. I, and I... Do, would, it be, would it be more interesting to save that because the the destruction of a of a gem monument now would be huge if that happened in an episode but here episode three it's almost it it is almost a throwaway gag that is kind of how it's it's used i think it's somewhere in the middle here because they do do a lot to make it seem like pearl cares a lot about the, the the fate of this place um and i think that so but not when it's then destroyed no, but I think by setting that up a little bit in the earlier parts of the episode, when it gets destroyed and Pearl doesn't react, you go, it's because she's being kind to Stephen, but in the inside, she's dying. <laughs> because, because that, that, like, I don't know if you picked that up necessarily in the first watch, but I definitely think that's present because like they spend so much time having her go, oh, this was like this, and this was like this, and Stephen, if only you'd seen this 100 years ago, it was incredible. Like Her love for this structure or her, the, the, the value she's in you know imparted onto the structure is definitely present so when you're right they do a gag of pulling it down but if you keep that stuff in mind you could argue that pearl is sort of like <laughs> dying but on would, the they, would it not been would it not have been better to show that so you have them all hug steven and pearl just looks you know you know you steven can't see her but we the audience can see her just looking like destroyed yeah that or, might have been yeah that might have been know. a way to do it i think maybe you're right maybe that would have made it clearer and nailed it in a little harder or maybe people would have been like oh, well it's just a building chill out lady um i don't know it's hard to, it's hard to judge but that's a really good point I, I think you're right they wouldn't have done that i don't think they could maybe they could do it now i don't know I think the gag would land almost harder now, wouldn't it? <laughs> because we now understand the importance of these structures because some of them had symbol- symbolic importance to just gem culture. Some of them had importance to specifically homeworld culture and some of them had specific importance to to rebellion culture. And like, it's, it's interesting to think, where did the spy at Sea Spire sit? We know it was built by homeworld. We know that. So is it important to Pearl because it represents homeworld before homeworld sort of you know what she what she loved about homeworld before homeworld turned into sort of murderous sort of or, or i don't know homeworld always been that way and in that case it's kind of is she that conflicted because it represents a culture she loves and misses but also hates because it's responsible for so much death like it's really interesting and there's a, i imagine there's a lot of conflicting thoughts there with pearl about what that stands for because that structure we know now is was a homeworld structure not a rebellion structure so that's another important part of it that I was thinking of as I was rewatching it. I was thinking that's interesting because we, there's an episode. I think it's it could have been great when Peridot brings up like the designs for some of the stuff they were building on Earth, and one of them is the Sea Spire, uh, which is the, the building from this week. And like it's it's, just, it's only a passing thing. She flicks through it, but that definitely confirms its origin. So then you sort of think like Pearl must have some really mixed up feelings about this building. <laughs> so like yeah and it's funny because it's it is kind of there very subtly but it is kind of present um and maybe even it could go to some way to explaining why she didn't react too strongly is because maybe like while she did understand its importance maybe at the end of the day she's like well it does also represent you know this horrible thing that the gems are doing on this planet yeah i suppose that's i mean that's a hard one to play given what the limited knowledge the audience has about all of that stuff yeah exactly you know it's hard to know how to play that yeah 100 percent. but i agree with you that like i think it's i think maybe they would struggle to do this gag today because i think we they would want to put more importance on it i think but i think that's about like as well like acknowledging the importance of the mythology of the show like in that moment in that in that in this era of the show the mythology wasn't as important to the show as it is now so i think that tracks do you know what i mean like when the mythology wasn't as important the mythology was throwaway once the mythology became important 
the mythology became less throwaway. So it's, you know, like they, the show puts weight on the mythology when it needs to. Um, and I think the characters' reactions are all fine. Um, they, I don't yeah. think anything feels out of character going back to it. It's a good point, though. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I think that sort of uh, wraps us up. Truth. And obviously, it's 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 wrapped us up a little bit earlier than, well, than usual, truth. Dan. So, huh? Triv? No. Oh, Triv. Okay. Oh, sneaky. You're getting out of it. Okay. Give me some Triv. I knew. I see. I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. Triv. Let's do Triv, Chris. Um, <laughs> this is the first episode that doesn't have to admit Beach City is the main location. Obviously set in the Lunar Sea Spire. Um, apparently Virgin Media UK offers this episode and laser light cannon on their TV choice service as a way to get people into the show. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's nice. Um, probably a good choice actually to do this and laser light cannon. I think those are probably mm. two, two to, to couple up if you were sort of devising some sort of way to get people into the show. I can't get, I've got to stop making that flood on a joke. <laughs> um, this episode marks the Let first down. and only, yeah, I know. This episode marks the first and only time that Garnet asks a question. There's a rule in this show that Garnet doesn't ask questions. The only other time, obviously, being she, there's a, a rhetorical question, but she never asks questions. That's like a weird rule they have with her character. Okay. Um, that's quite cool. That's a nice touch. Yeah, uh, so that's that's something that's always been true of the character, but like this is the one time they break it because I guess it happened a little bit earlier in the show. Um, I, I, although annoyingly, this piece of trivia does not actually include the question, so I'd have to open up the transcript to find it. I'll see if I can do that towards the end of the episode, just so we know what it was. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, several references to the sitcom Full House are made. I don't recall. Oh, Jamie Rebears oh, right. oh, my laptop making noises. Jamie Rebears a striking resemblance to Danny Tanner. Later on in the Luna C Spire, Stephen Winkson says, You got it, dude, which is a popular refrain of Michelle Tanner. Well there you go. It did stick out that moment, you got it, dude. I did think that was odd. <laughs> okay, there you go. So he was obviously referencing Full House, I guess. Stephen appears to yeah, have a console okay. that's designed like an N sixty four, which we've seen before and we've talked about. I think one he has in a later episode looks more like a GameCube if memory serves, but uh, I don't 100 remember. Uh, cool. The name He's going through the name on the uh, jury summons. I got this one this time, which is a really good one. The name on the jury summons is R. J. Finkel, which could be a reference to Ray Finkel, the fictional former former Miami Dolphins kicker and the main antagonist of the film Ace Ventura: Pet Detective. Right. Because cool. which that name only sticks in anyone's mind because of the infamous Finkel is Einhorn scene from that movie. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, the Mister Queasy plush toy has several aspects uh, reminiscent of certain Sesame Street characters. Um, the voice resembles that of the Cookie Monster. The doll itself is a parody of Tickle Me Elmo. Mm, so there you okay. go. Okay. Nice. Um, so you. Ah, you were not wrong, Chris. So, get this. Steven's Hey Mr. Postman song can be considered to be a reference to Please Mr. Postman, a song by the oh, Beatles cool. and the Mar- Marvelettes. So there you go. So it's not a nice. so it's not a cover of, but it could be it could be a but reference. It can be a reference, it. yeah. yeah it's certainly yeah. got vibes of it. Uh obviously in the episode of the test, they reveal that this this that this trip to the Sea Spire was actually a test for Steven. And he failed it. <laughs> um, and so they didn't. Another reason, maybe they didn't care so much. And of course, yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe they knew that this was like uh, not that important a building. Um, or well, I don't know. It doesn't quite fit with Pearl if you say that. But yeah, um, Pearl states that the spire didn't look like this a hundred years ago. This is the first time they imply the crystal gems must be very old. Um, and obviously, we learn in so many birthdays that the crystal gems are thousands of years old um, and are biologically immortal. So there you go. Is that the truth? That's the truth. So, ah, still got five minutes, Dan. Probably enough time for a song, isn't it? I, <laughs> I should have read the truth really slowly. This you haven't is... done a song in ages. I know, I know. It's just, okay. Yeah, I tell you what. I I have been struggling with my throat lately. It's been very sore. I will go to the effort. I will do a song. I've not decided which one, but I'll oh, do a mate. song. Later. Well, I was thinking the love one. The which one? For just one day, let's let's only think about love. I would love to do that, but I do not have the falsetto for that. Um, I could. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I could try. I, I How about s- it's over, isn't it? 
that I, that's I mean a good choice, but I don't know how that would sound on a ukulele. But let, tell you what, I All will right. have a, I will have a go at figuring out some of these songs, seeing which one sounds best, and I will put a song at the end. How's that? Okay. Well, Someone did say, is no. this because you saw a comment in the YouTube this morning that says I haven't done a song in ages? No, genuinely not. I didn't read that at all. But if it did, there you go. Boom. Someone did say Looking in the comments the this morning. Oh, let me give but let, me, you, let me give credit no. to the person who like who said that because I think that's only fair. No, I genuinely um, was just it looked at the. It felt like we were wrapping up, and I looked at the time and went, "Oh, there, there might be time for a song." I mean, yeah. I mean, like there is. That's fine. We'll do a song. Um, it was uh, Ryan Theman. Mm, cool. Well, or or this... Orion the Man. But if it's Orion the Man, then you need to capitalize the M on Man, Orion. Because otherwise it's well, Orion case... Theman. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, I've got the ending. So uh, I've been Chris Billingham. I've been Dan Doolan. And that's everything for this week on Stephen University. This Ryan is a song for you. Mom was a diamond who invaded Earth, saw its beauty. And it's worth Mom made an army And she fought herself Did that even end up Mattering when she Faked her own shattering Mom lived in hiding By the name of Rose With the friends she'd made And the form she chose Now all that's left of her Exists in me And I think that we can all agree that is a little bit upsetting I'd rather think about a wedding let's think about cake let's think about flowers let's think about dressing up and dancing around for hours there's an awful lot of awful things we could be thinking of But for just one day, let's only think about love We could think about lies that we told in the past We could think about hurt feelings and how long they can last Or we could think about hope You know I've been hoping that everything's better now Everything's out in the open We could think about flowers, we could think about cake, we could think about wonderful promises we have the power to make. There's an awful lot of awful things we could be thinking of, but for just one day let's only think about love. We could all rethink how we feel about Rose. When it comes to pink and the things that she did in the past, I suppose Oh, we could both feel better Oh, we could think about how Oh, we could think about us And we could think about now We could think about fighting We could think about long lost friends We wish we were inviting We could think about the broken gems At the cluster of the planet's core Oh, we could think about the bubble we made So that they can't be hurt any They can't be hurt anymore We could think about joy Oh, we could think about pain Oh, we could think about sunshine Oh, we could think about rain There's an awful lot of awful things We could be thinking of But for just one day, let's only think about just one day. Let's only think about just one day. Let's only think about love.